Hello, it's Dave here from Megapoints Controllers. And today I'll give you some random musings and discussions on what we've been up to. I've got lots of new things under development. Um, not quite ready to show you them yet, but I hope this will um, give you a flavour of what's going on. Now, as we've been designing and building various Mimic panels, um, they seem to be getting more and more complex and we've been coming under increasing pressure to fit more into less physical space. If you look at this as an example, this is a customer's panel that we're currently working on, uh, not to scale in this case, but it's a single panel with two, two sides. And if, if you look at what the public see, or what you would see if you were playing with the panel, you've got some nice buttons and indicator lights and everything looks rosy. But when you look at the work we do under the hood, you can see what's going on. And underneath we are planning, I don't know if you can see here, there's a faint line just here showing the outline of a button. And there's more here. And every single button and light has a footprint. And we take every single one into consideration so that we know when we do this and put two back to back in the case of a double slip, and let's show you on the actual design. The double slip is here. Then we know with a absolute certainty it's going to fit. But as we're squeezing more and more into less and less, um, we're being challenged for space continuously. So one of the things we've done is resized the footprint of the actual button. I'll give you the headline first. This is a cake of buttons. This has 12 on it, and that's the regular size. And the new size is this. Same 12 buttons, but with a smaller footprint behind it. So with these buttons, you can see um, we have a footprint uh, of that size. And the new ones are significantly smaller so if I, let's find some pliers, pop one of these off, I'll just break it. When I make them, I make them in 24s. There we go, snap it off. You can, oh, I've got a bent pin there. You can see that the button itself is the same, so when you press it on the front, you'll know no different. But under the hood, you should perceive, if you look, a fair old difference in size and we've basically shrunk it as far as we think we can with this design and yet support a fully rear mounted design so the fascia remains absolutely clean and free, free of fixings. You can see here the old button is the old and the new and you can see a difference in the size with the, um, I call it the early learning center guide or the laser etching show. So we can squeeze them up much tighter. But from the top or the front, you'd have no idea which one is which. And by the time we fit the, um, let's get this the right way around, the fascia on it, no, no clue whatsoever. If I drop this on, even though it's wrong for that, you'll get a clue. That's the bigger one, and there it is again. And this is the smaller. So I've put quite a lot of energy into shrinking that to a size that we think we can still work with. And the part number on our website remains the same. You don't get to choose um, because these, whilst I have them, will be shipped first. And I'll be phasing them out. And we've already started shipping some of the smaller black buttons already but mainly these are going to uh, Steve at KS Laser when he's wiring up panels and uh, struggling because we can't get the proverbial gallon into the pint pot. But then again, some of these designs are rather beautiful and I think his or well, Steve's design work on the panels is pretty darn good, particularly when you think that's going to render onto a plastic fascia and be reverse etched and coloured to match as well. Here's another one, this one's Farringdon, there's quite a lot going on here. So this is what you can see in the visible part of the layout, everything else is hidden. 
and has provision for block detection, feedback, and so on. So there's quite a bit of a work, bit of work going on there. That's more of um, a tock, I suppose, than a tick in that we're cleaning things up. A while ago, you saw me on a video um, showing the um, optical sensor that I was working on. Here it is, works great. And a customer came up to me and said, Dave, can you work with these inexpensive ones you can buy from a variety of sources? They're made in far off lands and uh, they basically cost peanuts. And I thought, really? What's the point of making that when I can buy this for less than the cost of a blank PCB? So in the bin and we started looking at these. Now, um, these boards I've tested on our feedback module and they do seem to work rather well. They're infrared, whereas we were using uh, ambient light, but uh, they do seem to work rather well indeed. <coughs> Excuse me. So here's a feedback module, and this is a slightly modified version uh, to make life easier. And what I've done, let me find a cable, talk amongst yourselves, Okay, we're back. So I've modified this and I've added a third row of pins uh, with the five volt power. Now, the feedback modules have power here, so they have five volts available. And that's so that uh, you can attach directly uh, an LED expansion board and test the thing works whilst you're setting it up uh, without having to need a multi-panel to display the feedback data. So as I already have that power available, what I've done is dragged it down to each pin. So effectively you can plug in a male to male servo lead and simply hook it up straight into the, um, this little um, inexpensive module here. Let me find some power. So I've got a little 12 volt power source, hook that in. So hopefully what you should see is, oh, let's bring it all in, hang on. Yes, I'm guilty of my favorite trick, which is to do things that you can't quite see. So here's my uh, feed, um, LED expansion board, just confirming that the feedback is working. And if I cover it up, you can see channel one is showing me I've got something in the way. Right, let's plug it into channel 24. And if I hook it up, you can see it's working there. And you can also see there's a feedback indicator here. Of course, the difference between this and my unit is I latch it for one second once it gets a positive. So if you've got stuff going past like this, you should get a continuous output rather than uh, flickering, which we don't really want. So these seem to work rather well. So um, what I need to do really is put something together and uh, let you see the whole thing work um, on, a, on a layout of some description. So I'm going to dig out my little, um, my little N-gauge layout and uh, see what we can do with that. But in the meantime, I plug a load of these in and should all start to uh, do stuff. Clearly I have too much time on my hands to be able to do this. But I bought a load of these units to test and um, to be honest, I can't fault them, so I may as well go with it. Let's stick another one in. I have a few, uh, few thousand on order still. There you are, they're all desperate to display information, aren't they? Oh, look at that, hey. Ooh, looking good. Go on, let's stick some more in, why not? It's Christmas, nearly. I suppose the only thing I need to do really is get them the right way round. Ah, here's one I had before. Which way round does that go? That way, whoops, signal. Put this in like this. Can I lay claim to a Christmas decoration here? Probably not. Don't worry, there's more stuff coming up, I think. Ah, yes. 
whilst on the subject of shrinking things, um, it's been obvious to me for a while that sometimes a multi-panel processor and all of its features is just more than you might need or your budget will allow. So we've put a little bit of effort into that as well, and I'm not quite ready to show you, but I'll give you a clue, a hint. There's all my, I don't know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I've got eleven plugged in, which means I've lost a few. And it's all looking pretty good. Of course, each of these units is adjustable. There's a little adjustment pot here, so you can uh, give that a twirl to get just the right amount of um, sensitivity that you desire. But so far, these have all worked out of the um, long distance packet. Okay, that's that. So let me find a multi panel. I've lost a multi panel. Oh, let me go dig one out. Talk amongst yourselves again. Here we go. Here's a multi-panel version 2.1. Um, it'll do a minimum of 24. It starts with 24 outputs. It has feedback and all the nice expansion features that you're probably, I hope you are, used to. I said I'd give you a hint. Here's the mini panel. It doesn't have any of the expansion features and it goes up to 12. It connects to the network and it will basically allow you uh, to operate your layout using your own or our buttons and LED lights up to a maximum of 12 turnouts. And um, in its initial form, you'll be able to plug it in and operate your solenoids, tortoises, servos or whatever. And in the future, I plan a, a future upgrade for the software which will allow you to have this as a slave panel to the multi-panel, so instead of requiring a second multi-panel for 10 or 12 servos or solenoids you might have on your layout over in the dim and distant side of a layout, you can just hook up one of these and they'll pair as well, where the multi-panel master does all of the, uh, the heavy lifting for you. Here's the infrared sensor attached to the track. I've literally stuck it on underneath to give it a try. I've drilled two five millimeter holes, sorry Dave, uh, into the track, which he can disguise later. I've got some O gauge here, and if I, oh you can see on the camera, the infrared transmitter here, uh, you can see the slight faint purple, which is invisible to the human eye. There's a multi-panel and, sorry, a feedback module connected to channel one, and as I cover it, you can see it's triggering channel one. And here's a little axle. Woohoo. No problem there. I still haven't adjusted it. And it does seem to be working pretty well. Overhead in the roof of this, uh, in the ceiling of this uh, office, is a fluorescent light. And that doesn't seem to be impacting it too much either. So, it seems to work rather well. I'd pan out and show you more of my desk, but it's a mess. Seems to trigger fairly quickly. And then it latches for that one second. Kaboom. Oh, let's get closer. So, certainly works well on O. There's a single axle. And I haven't done anything to the underside of the axle. It's whatever Dave lent me. Thanks, Dave. One more time, because this is fun. But it does just seem to be better than uh, having to go to all the trouble of design and build a circuit myself and actually make the things. So um, there's our optical uh, detector, perfect for analog layouts. <laughs>